Laurie Sherrod and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft OneDrive. So what I'd like to do a little different than usual is share my screen and um, I'm going to go directly into Microsoft OneDrive and share my PowerPoint from there instead of using PowerPoint or Connect. So here I am getting ready to log in. I've gone to portal.office.com, office.portal.com, figured that out. And it found my account. And I'm going to log in using my Clemson credentials, using Clemson, my username at clemson.edu. Now, not everybody has an account yet, but if you don't have an account yet, you will at some point in the future. Um, students will be getting one this summer, and most of the rest of the staff here at Clemson will be getting one within the next month. Now, one way you can tell if you have an account is if you have switched your email over to the cloud-based emails. That is a part of this, but again, today we're going to be concentrating on OneDrive. And here I'm going to open my PowerPoint. We'll get back and I'll, I'll show you some, we'll do a demo at the end, but first we're going to go through some slides with some screenshots. And you'll notice I've just uploaded my PowerPoint out here and I'm going to click on Start Slideshow. So very similar to, to being in PowerPoint. And you'll see here on my first slide, I've got my email address, if you have any questions, and my website, which is tinyurl.com slash training. And I will have a copy of this PowerPoint and a link to the recorded version of this. Additionally, you can obviously get to it from the CCIT website. Okay, first of all, um, if you're new to cloud storage, remember using cloud storage is like having your own USB flash drive out in the cloud. You can log into your application and store um, files or folders with files and just about any kind of file, including pictures or videos or just about any kind of file you'd want, you can stash out in your cloud storage. And you can get to those files from your computer, that you, obviously the computer you started with, or any other computer that can go online. You can also get to those files from your mobile device, your tablet, or your phone. And from your mobile device, you can see the same folders and files. And if you add additional applications to your mobile device, you can actually edit the files as well. So there are Word, Excel, and PowerPoint apps that you can download on your mobile device too. Now you'll notice I wrote plus extras, and that's that's an indication that in addition to storing files out in the cloud with OneDrive, you'll have very, very nice built-in cloud-based or online apps for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint that look and feel a lot like a slightly smaller version of your traditional Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So you can create your files out there or you can edit your files out there as well as uploading and downloading the files that are out there. Now you'll notice on the right I said you have either five gigabytes or one terabyte free. There's a little background to this. Microsoft initially, when it first started with the cloud service, you could get an account as a personal account. I have one. Um, and they gave you, I want to say, 20 gigabytes free. may have been 15 gigabytes. And there were some ways you could get additional storage. Last January, they downed that to 5 gigabytes. So if you have a brand new personal OneDrive account that was started sometime after last January, you may have only five gigabytes. But if you have a Clemson account, and you can have both a personal and a Clemson account, you're going to see one terabyte free, which is basically more than you'll ever have time to probably use. It takes a long time to upload that much data out into the cloud. Now, personal versus business. First of all, if again, if you created a Microsoft or Windows Live account, or if you had a Microsoft account in the past, or if you got a Windows 8 or 10 computer in the last few years, you were strongly encouraged to create or use your Microsoft account to log into the computer. And along with that, you got some cloud storage or your, your OneDrive personal. Um, additionally, if 
you haven't already gotten this option, you will soon have the option to have a OneDrive account through Clemson, or it may say your work or school account. Now there are a lot of different ways to get there, and this is just a few of the ways. You can go to OneDrive.com. Now if you have a personal account and a Clemson account that are both your Clemson email address, it'll come up and ask you, do you want your personal account or your work account? If you tell it to remember that, it may be stuck on one or the other. Uh, if you definitely want to make it go to your Clemson account, you should try going to either office.com or portal.office.com. Again, there are other ways as well, but those are the ways I find myself using the most. And anytime I go to portal.office.com, it obviously wants to encourage me to use that Clemson account. Additionally, with um, Clemson OneDrive, um, you do have up to 20,000 files, and each file can be up to 10 gigabytes in size if you can find enough bandwidth to upload a file that large. And that's within that one terabyte I mentioned on the previous slide. Now, if you are creating a brand new personal OneDrive account now, I would encourage you not to use your Clemson email address as the username, which is what I did about oh seven eight nine ten years ago when I created mine initially it used to be called SkyDrive at the time when I created mine okay if you go to OneDrive.com and you put in um, your username as username at Clemson.edu this is what I see do I want to go into OneDrive or do I want to go into OneDrive for business which would be the Clemson version now we will tell you the actual application is virtually identical the only difference is the amount of storage that I'm allowed to use and there are some back-end differences like it may see something about saving on SharePoint if you're in the business version whereas on the personal or the one on the left, the OneDrive, it doesn't show, say that. Okay, if I go to portal.office.com, I've noticed on mine, and I can't tell you this is true all the time, but if I click on that, if I see capital Laurie at Clemson.edu, that seems to be my Clemson account. And if I see lowercase Laurie at Clemson.edu, that seems to be my personal account. You can click on either one of these. Um, here I've clicked on use another account and it uh, let me go right into my Clemson account. Or if I click on that top one, it would also give me a choice of personal or business. Now if you do uh, select your business account, you're going to be putting your username at Clemson.edu and your password. And this is the same, again, if you're using the cloud outlook for your email already, you may have seen this sign-in screen before. Now, once you get into that portal, you're going to see all of these applications. And I will tell you that our Tech Talks the next three weeks will be on the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint applications so we won't talk too much about them today uh, we did one on the Outlook a few weeks ago but what we're going to be going to right now is the OneDrive and you'll notice that the OneDrive uh, you can get to from the blue icons here at the bottom or from the icon that you get to by clicking on these nine dots either way Now, some of the features of OneDrive include file storage and backup. I use this for backup a lot. Additionally, if I you know, need a file, I know I'm going to go to a Podium computer, I'll put it out there and go to that Podium computer and download it. I am trying to use this in place of my U Drive, which is what I used to use for that kind of situation, and in place of a flash drive, which I might lose between here and my classroom. It's wonderful for file sharing. You can uh, share a file with someone else and you can collaborate. You can have multiple people editing the same file or folder. And I will tell you, I do encourage folder sharing as opposed to file sharing. It just works a little better. And you can do file creation and editing from inside OneDrive. Now here I have just a little screenshot of one of the menu items you might see in OneDrive and just as a word of warning, it's going to change depending on what you have selected. And at the time I selected, at the time I did this screenshot, I believe I probably had a PowerPoint open because you'll see, I see a little PowerPoint open as my first option. But I do want to point out that the nine dots up here will take you to other applications. 
clicking on the word OneDrive will take you back to the beginning of your OneDrive. So if you've navigated to a subfolder and you want to go back. The search is wonderful. You can type in a word and search for uh, a document that has that word in the name or in the contents. The share allows you to share a file or folder. You can certainly download. So let's say you're trying to move a file from one computer to another. That works really well. If you've got a file or folder selected, you can delete it. You can move it to a, if it's a, to a different folder or subfolder. You can make a copy of a file or folder. You can rename. You can embed, and that gives you the ability to show your file within Blackboard or maybe within um, a website. Version history is incredible. So you accidentally erase a chunk of your file, and it does save automatically while you're working. You can use version history to go back to an old version of the file. All right, now here is a little screenshot where I was in my OneDrive. I didn't particularly have a file selected. I was at the beginning. I was on my files. And I clicked on the word new. And when you click on the word new, you have the ability to create a new folder to store your files in. Or you can create a new Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or OneNote document, an Excel survey, or a plain text document. You also have the ability to upload. And if you click on that upload and you're using the correct browser, you'll have the choice to upload a file or a folder. And we've played with this a little today. And I found that for some reason, Google Chrome seems to be working the best on my computers right now. So if you, if you don't see the folder option, you may want to try a different browser. All right, here I've navigated to one of my folders. It was called Family Pictures. And I will tell you, I did all of these screenshots in my personal OneDrive, but I'm going to be showing you from my um, Clemson OneDrive today. And I had a folder at the time I did this screenshot called Family Pictures. And you'll see I had a PDF document. And I can see that what kind of document it is, usually from right here. It is shared with someone. And the pictures below are the various pictures um, that are in that folder. Notice that I do have some uh, options up here. And one option we didn't see on the last little menu bar I showed you um, is, no, I don't see it there. I'm so sorry. Um, you do see mostly the same options. Now, if you're missing an option or if there's an option that you want and you're not seeing, the three little dots on the far right will give you more options. Now, if you've got your, your um, files in folder view, which is what this is right now, um, you can hover over the upper right-hand corner, get a circle, and click to select a file or multiple files or a folder. If you're in, in list view, which is another option I'll show you in just a moment, you will be able to see those little circles just to the left of each item in your list. Now, once you've got a file selected, you'll see that these options change a little bit. Here's one we didn't see before, order print. So apparently Microsoft, at the point when I did the screenshot, was offering to sell you printed copies of picture files. Yeah, I'm sure it would not say that if it was a music file or some other kind of file. So again, those change depending on uh, where you are and what you have selected in OneDrive. Now, let me point out while we're here on this sh screenshot that some other options are recent. Wonderful if you're working on a document recently and you don't remember what you named it, you want to get to it quickly, sometimes that works really nicely. You can look at all your photos and have some special photo options. Um, you can see which ones have been shared with you. And I believe that may say shared with me now instead of just shared. But if someone shared something with you and you can't find it, try there. And then Recycle Bin, if you deleted something, you can undelete it. And below that, you'll see the various computer names of computers that I've used to access this account from. So you can see that as well. All right, now, here I've decided I wanted to select a, either a file or a folder <coughs> and share it with somebody. And if you do select that Share icon, these are some of the things you'll see. You may see on the right, Add People. So that's one way to share it with other people. 
um, you may see at the top the options to either get a link or email the link to someone or you'll see manage permissions. Now in this case I've, I've selected and you'll see here I've got the list view so I did a little cir circle with the check mark beside it. Access your network files which is apparently a Word document I had out there. And I've selected manage permissions and notice from here you can put in an email address and select whether you want this person to be able to edit your document or just view it. So you'll see different options to share your document. And again, we will do that as soon as we get into the demo part of this presentation. Now, if you do want to stop sharing with someone, it, it's you know that was something that would concern me at one point. Um, you can select your item and click on that share again, and then you can see who it's shared with, and then stop sharing. So, if I wanted to stop sharing that one with Greg Mance, that's how I would go about it. You can also use the search tool to search through your documents for either a word or a phrase um, and then you can sort your documents by type or by date and the newer version actually has a little sort option in the upper right hand corner you'll see this is where you go from list view to uh, folder view but if you click on this you can sort it by name date modified size ascending or descending so you have some different things you can do as far as sorting now, if I selected New Word Document, this is going to take me into a fresh browser tab with the online version of Word, and I would type in my document. At the end, if I wanted to change the name, it is going to default to calling it Document 1. I would click right there to change the name. Uh, notice that it does save automatically, so no matter what, it's going to be saved, whether it's called Document 1 or whatever you've named it. When you're finished with uh, working on your document, you can click on OneDrive to go back to your list of files. And of course, here's the share button as well. And again, we'll be doing much more about that next week or in a few weeks. Now, there are mobile apps as well. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPad that uses an iOS operating system, if you go out into your um, application store, you can search for OneDrive and install and use OneDrive from there. Or if you've got an Android phone, I'm currently using an Android phone, and I have it installed on my phone, and I can see all my important files. Or if you're using Windows, um, if you're using a Windows phone, it, it comes automatically. You can't even remove it. It's just there. Uh, it will ask you your username and password and get you in that very first time when the phone is brand new. If you're using Windows 8 or 10, it's also built in. It's just there. I am using Windows 7 on the computer I'm um, doing this presentation with today, and I did have to install the app. So it's an app you install on Windows 7 or earlier. 8 or 10 is automatically built in. And it works a little nicer in 8 or 10. Um, with the app, you can open files on iOS, Android, Windows. But if you actually want to open in Word, um, you would, would have to also install the Word app. And the very first time you try, it will offer to install that Word app. Uh, you can also move files. So you can view them. You can move them. You can edit them if you have the app installed. Now, uh, if you do have the Windows app, if you've got Windows 8 or 10 or you've installed it, when you click on your documents or your folders, you're going to see on the left-hand side OneDrive is one of your options. And I did take the screenshot from my Windows 10 computer, so it looks like that. And I'm going to show you Windows 7 in just a moment. And I can see all of the folders I had at the time I did the screenshot. Notice I can actually move files around between these folders. I can open files. I can save them directly into the folder. So this is a, a pure sync application. So again, you don't have to use the sync, but it is available. Um, finally, if you're using uh, Office 2013 or 2016, and you have the sync installed, or you're using Windows 8 or 10, and you've logged in, um, when you go to File Save As, 
um, one of the options or a couple of the options are going to be your OneDrive accounts and you can see that at the time I did my save as here I had both personal and Clemson OneDrive available on the computer I was using. Again, this was my Windows 10 computer. The computer that I'm using for this demonstration only will you'll only see the Clemson one. Now, just a quick note about a comparison between the cloud services a lot of Clemson users are using. With Microsoft OneDrive, again, public 5 gigs, Clemson version 1 terabyte. If you no longer have a Clemson username and password, you will not have access to it anymore. You do have the ability for some wonderful built-in apps and this is probably the strongest part about OneDrive. You can get plenty of storage on the others but you don't have these apps that look and feel so much like Word. Uh, you do have the ability to log in with your Clemson password or you will as soon as it's available for you. One little feature that we added in Box that we don't have yet in OneDrive is the ability to create groups for classes via connect, connect.clemson.edu. Um, I don't know if that's in the works, but you can do it. It's just not going to be quite as easy. Um, Google Drive, a lot of people are using their Clemson Google accounts. Uh, with a Clemson Google account, I'm sorry, with a public Google account, you get 15 gigabytes, but with a Clemson one, it's unlimited. As of now, if your Clemson username and password no longer work, it's not affecting Google Drive since the password is not tied to Clemson. So as of now, you may keep after Clemson. Built-in apps are available in Google Drive. It does have the Word, Excel, PowerPoint applications where you can edit or create documents, but it's not quite as fancy looking as the Microsoft apps. Uh, you cannot log in with your Clemson password. Again, it's a separate password that you have to invent the first time you go in. And it is not tied to Connect. And then Box, publicly you would get 10 gigabytes if you just went to box.com, but if you use clemson.box.com, uh, they're giving you 50 gigabytes, but if you had a good legitimate reason for more, you can turn in an IT help ticket and get additional storage there. Um, it is tied to your Clemson password, so you don't get to keep it after you, it no longer works. Um, there are no really full featured built-in apps with Box. It, there is ability to tie to your Microsoft Office, but you don't have a browser-based um, standalone app like you do with the others. Um, and it is tied to Connect, so it's real easy to share with a class or group here at Clemson. Alright, I am going to stop my PowerPoint now and just close my browser tab where I had it opened and go back over here into my OneDrive. Now, you'll notice that I see a little breadcrumb trail. I had my PowerPoint right here. If I go back to the word files here, I will see my folders and a couple of files that I've just left kind of hanging here. Now, Sometimes, if you get too many things to share on, see on one screen, you may want to come up here, and this little icon right here will change it into list view. So sometimes I like to look at, at list view. Now you'll notice that these are all folders I've put out here, um, and I can tell whether I've shared them. That one I have not. That one I have. I've shared it with Chris Poole. Um, so I can I can see that kind of stuff. This one is shared with everyone. I did take my Clemson U drive and copied the whole thing out here. It's something I definitely recommend to people who are dependent on your U drive. Wonderful way to back it up. Now, I would like to go into, I would like to uh, take a look at my recipes folder. And let me just go in there a second and show you what's in there. I've got some subfolders and some files. Now, if I'd like to share that whole folder, I can click on it right there. And I click on the share icon. You'll notice when I clicked on it, I got some new options. And I can specify, I'm going to specify everyone who said they would like to share my folder with me and put in their names. I'm not going to send an email invite. I'm going to click share. Now, you'll see this shared with me. Let me see if anyone shared anything with me. Nah. Again, I have not been using this account, so I haven't really gotten into it too much. You see, not too much stuff out here. So now everyone who I shared with, you should be able to click on Shared With Me and go directly in there. 
I'm going to go back over to my OneDrive folder. You know, see, I'm still in list view. Um, I can click on any one of these things and get the options, including open, or I could just click on it to open it, or download it, or move it, or there's some sometimes additional options. Let's check out version history on this one. And you can see I worked on it a couple of other times today, and I could go back. I definitely do not want to go back. I like my newest version. Um, now, I'm going to uncheck that by just clicking off of it. Now I have the ability to upload a file. So I'm going to upload a file. Notice I could do a folder as well. And I'm going to upload this little picture of a diskette. It's very little. And you'll see it uploaded pretty quickly. It's a PNG file, so there it is. And if I click on it, I can see it. It's a little diskette picture. And I use this little X to go back out of it, and it goes back to my list. Then I'm going to click off of it again, and this time I'm going to say New Word Document. It is using Word Online, which I showed you a few moments ago, Test Doc. And notice it's saving it automatically, and I'm going to click on it and change its name to Test let me try this again. Testing. Okay. And I'm finished with it. So this time, notice I only have one browser tab other than the Adobe Connect. So if I close my browser tab, I'd be out of it. But if I uh, click back on Lori Sherrod, that's going to take me back to my list of files, my OneDrive. All right, and there's my testing go back to my the beginning and just do one quick search. I'm going to search on testing. Okay. Let me try. It's still thinking about that, I think. I'm going to search on test. Hmm. I guess we won't do that one. I have a feeling I have left my OneDrive account. Let me try doing it now. Test. I'm still not finding it. Okay, I don't know what the deal is with that. Now, if I wanted to go back to my folder view, I'd go right over here. Finally, I would like to uh, show you the settings. The settings icon is right up here. And I'm going to look at my Office 365 settings. And I can um, look at my personal information. For example, if you wanted to stick a picture out or a phone number or, or anything else out there, you could. But over here under Settings, you can do things like change notifications, install new software. I would recommend you not use that to change your password because right now it's tied to the Clemson password. But just wanted to show you there are some settings options. And you can collapse or expand that. And if I go back to um, Office 365 and OneDrive, I guess I was in the Office 365 settings. Let me do this one more time. OneDrive settings, that's what I wanted instead. Um, site settings. I don't think we'll do settings. Okay. 